This week, on Deadful Sunday, we'll be continuing with the idea of alterity. But in this episode, we will give particular focus to our philosopher of the week, Richard Kearney, to extend beyond that which we covered in the last episode on Dan Zahavi. Pictured here is Jeremiah O'Donovan Rossa, who is an Irish Fanian leader and a very prominent member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Hence, today we'll be taking an article in The Guardian which looks back at Irish Republicans in 1921 and some of the tactics they used to gain independence. In doing so, we'll be looking at the construction of the other and how Kearney might offer a useful solution in cases like the one in The Guardian we're referring to here. The article in focus is titled Ireland 1921, How Republicans Used Their Whiteness to Win Freedom, which was published today in The Guardian. It focuses on the Irish struggle for independence from England and the terrible actions which were taken against civilians in continuing the colonial oppression of Ireland. However, it outlines how some commentators, and even Republicans themselves, used racist language and tropes in their opposition to British colonialism in Ireland. Referring to the account of a journalist of the day, J.L. Hammond, and his wife Barbara, the article states, quote, the best description he had heard of his own government's policy was from a French journalist who told him that Britain was trying to subdue a people as intelligent as any in Europe, end quote. Thus, quote, the unspoken assumption of the French journalist who impressed Hammond was crucial. The Irish merited better treatment than Berbers fighting French and Spanish colonialists in North Africa because they were white, end quote. Additionally, the author states that, quote, although the Irish revolutionaries worked to forge links with anti-colonial movements across the world, they were increasingly aware that proclaiming their whiteness was a clever card to play, end quote. It goes on to quote the Irish representative at the peace conference in Versailles in 1919, Sean T. O'Kelly, with his line to an American journalist that, quote, it seems that the blacks and the yellows, all colours and races, may be heard before the conference except the Irish. End quote. In sum, the whiteness of the Irish was used by Republicans and commentators alike as reason enough for their liberation from colonialist England. In Strangers, Gods and Monsters, Richard Kearney advances his argument about otherness. He discusses the intellectual origins of what he calls alterity. It has, for example, come about in the dichotomy of good and evil. Quote, ever since early Western thought equated the good with notions of self-identity and sameness, the experience of evil has often been linked with notions of exteriority. Almost invariably, otherness was considered in terms of an estrangement which contaminates the pure unity of the soul. Strangeness was thought to possess our most intimate being until, as Macbeth's witches put it, nothing is but what is not. Evil was alienation, and the evil one was the alien." End quote. Thus Kearney finds alterity to possess a central location in Western thought. He goes on to say this more explicitly, quote, "...most ideas of identity, in short, have been constructed in relation to some notion of alterity. Contemporary thinkers like Levinas and Derrida have made much of the fact that the Western metaphysical heritage, grounded in Greco-Roman thought, has generally discriminated against the other in favour of the same, variously understood as logos, being, substance, reason, or ego. This prejudice is called the ontology of sameness by Levinas and logocentrism by Derrida, but both share the view, one canvassed by a wide variety of continental thinkers, that justice demands a redressing of the balance so as to arrive at a more ethical appreciation of otherness." End quote. For Kearney, then, otherness, or alterity, has proved to be an incredibly fruitful intellectual concept for the West. In proposing a solution to this unethical mode of otherness, he refers to Julia Kristeva, who, quote, in Strangers to Ourselves, relates this recurring xenophobic drive to a basic unconscious process whereby we externalize what is strange within us onto an external stranger. The result is a denial of the fact that we are strangers to ourselves, a denial which takes the form of negating aliens. 
To the extent that we exclude the outsider, we deceive ourselves into thinking that we have exempted ourselves from estrangement. We fool ourselves into believing that we have purged that singular sense of anxiety which Freud calls the uncanny, das unheimlich." End quote. Kearney's point in drawing on Kristeva is that when the individual views the other, they exclude themselves from otherness. Looking to Freud's unheimlich, it is argued that the individual who others does not experience the disconcerting feeling of being othered. In short, Kearney and Kristeva take aim at those who do not see that within everyone there is otherness. He finds there to be a solution. Quote, I conclude accordingly that one of the best ways to de-alienate the other is to recognise A, oneself as another, and B, the other as in part, another self. For if ethics rightly requires me to respect the singularity of the other person, it equally requires me to recognise the other as another self-bearing universal rights and responsibilities, that is, as someone capable of recognising me in turn, as a self capable of recognition and esteem." End quote. The solution to the unethical treatment of otherness is to recognise that there is no sight of being that does not contain alterity, that otherness is formative at every level. To apply all of this to the article, the Irish Republicans and the relevant commentators constructed a racialized other in order to justify Irish independence and condemn colonial oppression. In doing so, they exempted the Irish from otherness and located them in the sight of being of sameness. They linked the Irish's whiteness with the English whiteness to say, look, we aren't so different, and compared themselves to the Oriental other, whom they thought they should not experience the same treatment as. And they were half right. Nobody should be colonized but this is irrespective of skin colour. The solution, then, is to recognise the centrality of otherness within all of us, and not erect transcendental categories of sameness, such as whiteness, with which oppression can then be subsequently wielded. This marks the end of the 20th episode of Deadville Sundays. We hope you enjoyed it, and that we'll see you next week.